Hello, everyone. How are you today? Yeah. It's fall now, I think, right? Yeah. Leaves are starting to turn different colors. Yeah, that's exciting. Maybe we'll think a little bit more about things that are falling next week. But this week, we're going to talk about a very special holiday, kind of a set of two holidays, uh, Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. Yom Kippur. Anyway, so the first book I'm going to read to you is called Sammy's First, Sammy Spider's First Yom Kippur. <clears throat> Sammy Spider was relaxing in his web on the Shapiro's living room ceiling. Suddenly, Josh burst through the front door, blowing a horn he had made at school. Sammy jumped at the loud noise. Wow. Have you, any of you played a horn? It goes, yeah. like that, like, yeah. or, yeah. Hey, yeah, I played a trumpet for a while. Which also made this drum. Mother, shouted Sammy, what is Josh blowing? That's a shofar, Sammy. The rabbi blows the shofar at Rosh Hashanah services to welcome the new year. The shofar is sounded at the end of Yom Kippur. What Yom Kippur? asked Sammy. Spiders. Sammy looks like the small spider, and then this is his mom's spider, I think, because she's, she's a bigger spider, and he looks like he's asking her questions, to me at least. Yom Kippur is a holy day when people tell each other they are sorry for saying or doing something hurtful. On Yom Kippur, Josh's family will spend the day in synagogue praying. Mr. and Mrs. Sapira won't eat until services are over at the end of the day. Will we go to synagogue too? asked Sammy. Silly little Sammy. Spiders don't go to synagogue. Spiders spin webs, answered Mrs. Spider. So they go to synagogue, which is kind of like, it's a kind of church where certain people go. Josh placed his little shafar under the honey dish next to his family's large curvy shafar. Can I have a shafar to blow? pleaded Sammy. Mrs. Spider laughed. Silly little Sammy. Spiders don't blow sh shafars. What do spiders do? Spiders spin wet. Yeah. So he gets to blow the shafar. Sammy lowered himself on a strand of webbing to get a closer look at the shofar. And Mrs. Shapiro asked Josh, how was school today? I have homework, Josh said. My teacher wants us to make a list of all the people we should apologize to, or say sorry to, before Yom Kippur. Will you help me write the list? We'll do it after dinner, Mrs. Shapiro suggested. While I set the table, why don't you put your toys away? Your ball belongs outside. Hmm. Any of you get homework? No, probably not yet. I got a lot of homework, so. Yeah, maybe when you're older, you get homework. Exciting. Yeah. It's not too bad. John picked up his ball. He bounced it on the floor, and Sammy scrambled up his web as the ball came towards him. Oh, no. Looks like he's kind of, doesn't look like he's cleaning up very well. Josh dribbled the ball a few times and bounced it even harder. Oh no, Sammy's web began to shake. He felt like he was on a trampoline. Have any of you been on a trampoline? I was on one. Um, my neighbor had one once. He used to go over to his yard. He bounced up and down on a trampoline. Yeah. Mr. and Mrs. Shapiro, Josh's mom and dad, rushed in to see what the noise was. As Josh's ball took a final bounce, oh no, what do you think's gonna happen? It hit a shelf. 
knocking the honey dish on the floor, Sammy's web snapped loose. Oh, what happened? His parents asked. Josh looked frightened. I was playing and it hit the shelf. It was an accident. I didn't mean to do it, he said. As he spoke, he noticed two little spiders scurrying away. Um, have any of you accidentally hit something? I don't know if it's something in back in there. Yeah. Mr. Shapiro looked at Josh sternly. Don't you remember the rules? The ball is an outside toy. Josh nodded cheerfully. Then please take it outside and get a broom. Sammy and Mrs. Spider climbed up to the ceiling and began spinning themselves a new web. Josh swept the glass from the floor and gently replaced the shofars on the shelf. Mrs. Shapiro looked at Josh. Now please put up your toys so we can have dinner. Then we can work on the list of the people you want to apologize to before Yom Kippur. As Josh hurried to put his toys away, he looked up at the ceiling. The two spiders were busy spinning a web. That's right, spiders spin webs. And Mrs. Spider kept coming up. After dinner, Josh sat on the couch with his parents. Mr. Shapiro was hand holding a notepad and a pen. Who is first on your list, she asked. Just looked at his parents. Both of you, he whispered sadly. I'm sorry I didn't put my toys, put away my toys when you asked me. I'm sorry I played with the ball in the house when I knew I shouldn't. I'm sorry I broke the honey dish and knocked the shofars off the shelf. Josh's parents gave him a long hug. We accept your apology, they said. There's one more thing I want to add to the list, said Josh, looking up. I'm sorry I broke your web, little spiders. Oh. What do you think that happened? Sammy looked at his mother and smiled. I think we should accept the apology, he said. Oh, I think I'll accept the apology. Yeah. All right, so some vocab words. Yom Kippur, which is the holiday, right? Where they write down people they're sorry for. They also read a book, a very special um, kind of book we're going to talk about in our next and last book on Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. I can tell when it is time for Rosh Hashanah and Yom, Yom Kippur. I don't even have to look at the calendar. I can tell because we get a lot of mail. Every year, people we know send cards to wish me and my family a happy and healthy new year. La Shana Tova, they say in Hebrew, which is another language like we talked about last, last week with uh, Latinx Heritage Month. But Spanish is another language. I see the leaves change from shades of green to browns and reds and yellows. I feel, I even feel the air change from warm and stuffy to cool and crisp. This is near the time of year when the seasons change from summer to fall. This is the time for the high holy days, Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. Mm. I also see the leaves changing from green to yellows and reds outside. Maybe you see that too. Mm. My sister show my sister show me the place for Rosh Hashanah, the Jewish New Year, on my Jewish calendar. Jewish um is something is kind of like being is it means two things. It can mean sort of being uh that like your mom was um, Jewish, um, which means that somewhere along the line, her mom, uh, either her grandmother, her mom, her mom, her grandmother, and so on, were Jewish. Um, or it can mean that you believe 
and celebrate certain holidays. Um, yeah, a lot of people are both Jewish because their family is Jewish and Jewish because they believe and celebrate certain holidays, but sometimes people are only one or the other. My sister showed me the place for Rosh Hashan, Jewish New Year on my Jewish calendar. It is the first two days of the Hebrew month of Tishri. Why do we celebrate the New Year in the seventh month? I ask, because my sister's answer, it, the Torah tells us to, the seventh month is special, just like the seventh day of the week. Shabbat is special. Hmm. So, Rosh Hashanah is not the new year in terms of the months, my mother says. It's the new year for how we think and act. Grandmother nods. It is also the day when God created the world. That means that Rosh Hashanah is the world's birthday, says my brother. So Jewish people that uh, believe that um, their God created the world on the second day um, in um, the seventh month. Yeah, the first two days of Tishri, right? Okay. On Rosh Hashanah Eve, I help my mother bless and light the holiday candles before we eat the New Year's meal. I watch the candles glow as we thank God for bringing us all together. We pray for a new year of joy and good health and peace. See round apples and ra round raisin filled challa, the special bread we eat on Rosh Hashanah. They're round like the cycle of the year is round. Can you think of any other things that are round? Here they have apples, grapes, round uh, raisin filled challa, the special bread in a circle, apples, uh, more grapes, the beehive. Um, let me think. Anything else you can think of? Oh, wheels, um, yeah, circles, balls, yeah, like Sammy had a ball in the last book, right? Or not Sammy, Joshua did. Sammy was the spider. Um, I don't know. My sisters say the blessing over the chala. I say the blessing, I get to say the blessing over the apples. Dip the apples in chala in honey and pray that this year, New Year, will be sweet. Oh, like honey as sweet as honey and apples and chala taste. Mm, honey is very sweet. We go to synagogue, right? Remember, which is that a kind um, of church on Rosh Hashanah day. We wear new clothes to help us celebrate a new year. I see my rabbi dressed in a white robe. I see that the Torah is with a holiday white cover. Why are they white, my brother asked. Because I whisper back, it's the color of forgiveness. And the rabbi chants from the Torah. He chants the story of Abraham and Isaac. Right. So, you've heard rabbis, like the one you do. This is my best drawing. But, yeah. Um, a rabbi is a holy man or a kind of um, priest for Jewish people. Um, and he reads from a book. Oh my gosh. So this here, this is under the picture. It looks more like a scroll kind of deal. Um, called the Torah. He does that at the synagogue, yeah. In synagogue, we pray and listen to the shofar. Oh, remember that horn earlier that uh, Joshua was playing? Yeah, the curved horn of a ram. I sit on tiptoe and crane my neck so I can see the Baal Dekia blow the shofar. Dekia Shivarim Teruah. The rabbi softly calls out the notes the Baal 
Kekia to play. So Shafar gives one long, loud blast. Then three medium wailing blasts. And finally, I hear the short blast, the sound as if someone is sobbing. The sound of the shafar reminds me of God. It makes me think about everything I need to do to be a better person. In the bathroom, in the afternoon, oh, I said in the bathroom. In the bathroom, I do not look, does not look like how many people are usually in the bathroom. In the afternoon, I go with my family to the river. While grandfather chants the Tosh lip prayers, I search deep in my pockets for tiny bits and crumbs of lint. You have little things in your pockets? In my pockets, I have some keys and a wallet and a phone. You have in your pocket. Maybe you have one, two, just little bits of stuff. But that is. Oh. Yeah. Um, I pretend that the bits of lint are all of my bad deeds and thoughts of the past year, and I throw them into the water. As they float away, I promise you better during the new year. When Rosh Hashanah. When Rosh Hashanah is over, we wait for Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, to start. As we wait, we try to peer closer to God. I think about the good things that He wants me to do. I put a part, I put part of my allowance in my special, uh, in my special box. I give the box to my rabbi so he can help people who are in need. Or he gave the rabbi something to help other people, so he's helping a lot of people by giving away. The tenth day of Tishiri is Yom Kippur. It is the day of fasting and I skip all my snacks. Mother and father do not eat anything at all. I see books on our dining table instead of food. We eat nothing at all from sundown to sundown. My father says, on Yom Kippur, we feed our minds and our souls, not our bodies. So Yom Kippur, people do what is called, here we go, fasting. I don't know if you've ever done some fasting where they don't eat anything for a whole day, but only the older people, um, people who aren't like little kids um, do the fasting and people who aren't sick. Um, I don't know if you've ever done any fasting. I've done fasting for holidays that are part of my beliefs, um, but yeah, sometimes in order to focus better. Uh, some people don't eat for a while, um, but they usually do it in a very specific way. So don't just stop eating randomly. Right? You get very hungry. The 10th day of Tishiri is Yom Kippur. It, oh, just read that. Hi. Sorry, my bad. On Yom Kippur, we go back to the synagogue and pray some more. We do our best to atone for the times when we did not do our best. We are sorry for any bad thing we have done. Say I'm sorry to my friends. I say I'm sorry to my family. I say I'm sorry to God. We all forgive and ask to be forgiven. The rabbi chants from the book of Jonah. We listen and then pray some more. Jonah. He's in an animal. What is it? A fish? Close. It's a whale. And here's some fish down here. eventually gets out of the way. Um, a special story that a few different um, people with different beliefs tell. <clears throat> At the end of the service, after sunset, the shafar is blown again. The kia gedola, the rabbi calls softly, but all the kia kekia makes the shofar blast as long and loud as he can. We feel clean and good inside. I feel proud, ready to start a good new, uh, good new year and be the best that I can be. Then we gather with friends and break fast with another holiday meal. So the meal, right, as we remember, is part of Rosh Hashanah. 
It has, here's a picture of the horn I drew, an apple, some honey. Um, you could draw a little chow on it. All foods and things that uh, Jewish people do during Rosh Hashanah. Every year we get a lot of cards. I line them up on a table where everyone can see. But I remember something special that I didn't see on any of the cards that came in the mail. So I make my own card and put it on the table too. Happy birthday world. Hashana Tova. So any of you get cards like that? They're saying happy birthday. I do. I do. Today is actually my birthday too. That's just the world's birthday. All right. So what we're going to do now is we're going to get out some crayons and some paper, and we're going to make a birthday card for the world. So the first thing we're going to fold it like this. We have it like this. And on the outside here, you want to um, maybe have your parents write happy birthday for you. Happy birthday. And now draw a picture for the world. So in this book, they drew a picture of like the whole earth. Um, maybe instead you want to draw like something like something else that reminds you of the world. So Yeah, you see, I drew like a picture of some trees, some mountains, some water, a house, a tower, and so on the inside. Um, maybe draw some pictures like a birthday cake. So, right? I draw. Here's my little picture of a birthday cake. Two. World. 
our true world, and then you sign it. I sign it with my name, and you sign it with your name. Yeah. You draw something else too, like you know, some other things to go with birthday, like um, pink balloons. Yeah. yeah. Our little balloon here. Um, what else do you do on your birthday? I oh, there are presents. That's another thing. How do you draw the little? Presents and a balloon and some tape. So this is for your happy birthday card. Yeah. All right. So that's our. So that's one thing we can do. And then what I want you to do is think about who you want to say sorry to. Who do you think you should apologize to? And then. I want you to go and see if you can do that. Okay, so I'm going to call my mom and then talk to um, some of my friends and tell them I'm sorry for things that I've done in the past um, so that we can move forward. All right, well, I'm going to go do that. I'll see you all next week. Um, Grant's going to be reading a, quite a bit next week, I think. Um, until then, bye everyone.